Coming up today, President Park Geun-hye is set to become the first ever South Korean leader to deliver a speech to the African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa. The government vetoes a recent controversial revision to the National Assembly Act that would allow more frequent parliamentary hearings. It says the revision could paralyze state affairs. First, Donald Trump has reached the number of delegates he needs to be confirmed as the Republican Party's presidential nominee. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello, it's noon on Friday, the 27th of May. You're tuned in to our midday newscast here on Adidang TV. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. We begin in Ethiopia, where President Park Geun-hye is continuing her first leg of her three-nation tour of East Africa, meeting Ethiopian Prime Minister Hale Marayam Desalin on Thursday. The South Korean leader reiterated the need to press North Korea to abandon its nuclear ambitions, which pose a serious threat to Northeast Asia and the wider world. In response, Ethiopia's Prime Minister said his country has always and will continue to support the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and help spread the initiative to other countries in Africa through its influence in the continent. He also pledged to sincerely fulfill UN Security Council sanctions on North Korea, saying Ethiopia always stands on the side of the South. And as well as discussing North Korea, the leaders of the two countries also vowed to boost their bilateral economic ties as a means of ensuring mutual growth in the future. For more details, our Song Jisun reports from Addis Ababa. President back in Ethiopian Prime Minister Haile Mariam de Saliner said to deal dozens of deals on Thursday. Among the agreements is a planned textile complex covering 100 hectares or one square kilometer, expected to give Korean investors a competitive edge in production costs. Ethiopia has a strong textile industry with production costs that are about 30 percent of that in China. Korea's entry into the Ethiopian market will enable us to send exports to the U.S. and the EU without tariffs. Seoul will take a greater role in Ethiopian infrastructure projects, especially in transportation, power generation and urban development, while sharing its knowledge in high-value-added sectors like science and technology, energy, e-government and customs. Another highlight of the president's state visit is the launch of Korea Aid, a new official development aid program offering food, health and cultural services on wheels. In our bid to support Africa's ability to achieve its Sustainable Development Goals for 2030, adopted at the UN last year, Seoul will launch Korea Aid, a comprehensive development project that covers healthcare, food and culture, leaving no area left behind. By taking an active role in supporting Ethiopia's growth and transformation plan, Seoul reinforced its comprehensive partnership with the African country for mutual growth, paving the way to enter the continent, considered the last explosion in the world. Song ji Arirang News, Addis Ababa. Now, later on this Friday, President Park and hye will take another historic step to further strengthen Korea's strategic partnership with the African continent. She will become the first South Korean leader to address the African Union Commission at its headquarters in Addis Ababa. There, she will lay out Seoul's new policy approach toward Africa, noting the massive untapped potential of the continent. Officials say her vision will be aimed at achieving mutual growth through economic cooperation and sustainable peace and security while expanding exchanges in culture and people. Before her speech, President Park will also sit down with the head of the African Union Commission to discuss ways to reaffirm their comprehensive partnership. We here at Adidang TV are going to be broadcasting the President's speech to the African Union live and in full with English translation to watch some uh, history unfold in front of your eyes. Tune in from 4.30 p.m. Korea time this afternoon. That's in around four and a half hours from now. 
Now, in other news, the Korean government has decided to pull the plug on a controversial revision to the National Assembly Act. It says that allowing more frequent parliamentary hearings would immobilize state affairs. The opposition parties have vowed to reintroduce it when the new assembly starts work next week. Our political correspondent Park Ji Won reports. At a cabinet meeting presided over by Prime Minister Hwang Gyo Wan on Friday, the government decided to veto a controversial revision to the Parliamentary Act. The cabinet voiced concerns the bill is highly likely in breach of Korea's constitution as it allows the National Assembly excessive control of the executive. After the cabinet meeting, the Minister of Government Legislation explained the rationale behind the decision, reiterating that more frequent hearings would end up paralyzing state affairs. The revision gives Parliament new controls over the executive and the judiciary without having basis in the Constitution. The revision does not comply with the principles of the separation of power and checks and balances as laid out in the Constitution. The outgoing National Assembly speaker and opposition party lawmakers argue that the revision would actually help Parliament more promptly deal with the social issues at hand. The main opposition Minju Party of Korea's floor leader Woo Sang-ho was highly critical of the government's decision, saying it violates the spirit of parliamentary democracy. The three opposition parties all strongly condemn the decision, and we agree to jointly respond to the matter. We will seek a revote on the bill when the 20th National Assembly begins next week. The ruling Senate Party's floor leader Chung Jin Suk says there should not be a revote, arguing more in-depth legal interpretations of the process need to be undertaken. Park Ji Won, Arirang News. Now, amid the controversy, it's actually a special day for the National Assembly, which marked its 68th anniversary with a special ceremony this Friday morning. In attendance were the outgoing Assembly Speaker Zhang Yihua and the leaders of the ruling and opposition parties taking stage. However, as you can imagine, was the controversial revision of the National Assembly Act that was vetoed by the Cabinet uh, this morning. Uh, Jung said submitting the act for reconsideration is within the president's authority, but the parliament's independence must also be respected. Two North Korean vessels crossed the northern limit line near Yongpyongdo Island in the West Sea at around 7.30 a.m. Korea time this morning. Seoul's defense ministry says the patrol boat and fishing boat retreated northward from the maritime border after the South Korean Navy fired several uh, warning shots in their direction. The South Korean military has been put on alert given the heightened tension uh, on the peninsula at the moment. Officials say surveillance along the NLL has been beefed up and the military is keeping a keen eye on any unusual activities north of the border. Now, it's safe to say it probably wasn't the easiest for many to see or even breathe through the thick layer of haze this morning that is lingering over Korea. A high level of fine dust has been accumulating over the Korean peninsula since yesterday, and it's mostly because of heavy smog flowing in from China. Uh, Hwang Ho-jun reports. Instead of clear blue skies, Seoul woke up to a thick layer of smog smothering the city skyline. The haze is mostly due to the heavy smog flowing in from China, raising the fine dust alert level to bad. According to the Korea Environment Corporation, the concentration of fine particulate matter, or PM2.5, was at 101 micrograms per cubic meter, more than double the annual average recorded by the Environment Ministry. A band of stagnant air above the Korean peninsula is trapping the influx of pollutants from China, which combined with ultra-fine particles from Korea, affecting air quality. Fine dust, which can come from fossil fuel combustion and industrial processes, can have harmful effects on the human body, resulting in respiratory, cardiovascular, and ophthalmic diseases. The fine dust is expected to fade beginning Saturday afternoon. Until then, the Environment Ministry advises people to refrain from doing outdoor activities or to wear a mask. Hwang Arirang News. 
Now, leaders at the G7 summit have condemned North Korea in the strongest terms over its fourth nuclear test and long-range missile launch early this year. In a joint statement released on Friday, the leaders urge Pyongyang to stop all provocative acts that pose a threat to regional peace and security. They also called on the North to respect all UN Security Council resolutions and the joint statement from the six-party denuclearization talks in 2005. The statement calls for cooperation by members of the international community in implementing the UN sanctions on the Kim Jong-un regime. It also expresses concerns about the North's human rights abuses and Japanese abductees and also calls for an end to actions that uh, raise territorial tensions in the South China Sea. Now, once the G7 summit wraps up, U.S. President Barack Obama is set to visit Hiroshima on Friday with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe becoming the first sitting U.S. president to do so. The White House says Obama plans to lay flowers at a memorial remembering the victims of the 1945 atomic bombing of the city. He will deliver a speech calling for a world without nuclear weapons and visit the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum. However, Obama has been making very clear that there will be no apology for the bombing. An estimated 140,000 people were killed in the atomic bombing, including 20,000 Koreans. It's now official. Donald Trump has seized the Republican Party's presidential nomination in the race for the White House, despite a slew of controversies and a number of abrasive remarks. Trump will go toe to toe with either Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. Park Jong Hong has more. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump has surpassed the number of delegates required to grab the party's nomination. The Associated Press reports that Trump now has the backing of 1,238 delegates, one more than the 1,237 needed. I'm so honored. I'm so honored to be in North Dakota and having hit that. I'm so honored by these people. They had such great sense. Over the past four months, Donald Trump has seen off 16 others seeking the nomination. Since early this month, he has been the GOP's presumptive presidential nominee when he won the primary in Indiana and his last remaining rivals dropped out. Now, the Republican convention set for mid-June will become the official stage giving the nomination to the billionaire businessman turned politician. There are five remaining primaries, including the states of California, Montana and New Jersey. But with Trump, the only candidate left, observers say they have no bearing on the outcome. In the November presidential election, Trump will face either former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton or Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, who are still vying for the Democratic ticket. Park Jong hong Arirang News. Now, Korean households are choosing to refrain from making purchases as income growth is slowing. Statistics Korea says its index showing the average propensity to consume came in at 72.1% in the first three months of this year, down 0.3 percentage points from a year earlier. This essentially means that people spend about 72 US dollars out of a disposable income of $100. The figure marks the lowest level for the first quarter period since the related data was first compiled back in 2003. The record low number comes on the lower household income, which dropped 0.2% in the first quarter from the previous year. Uh, if we strip out inflation, the average monthly income of households in Korea, in the first quarter, stood at roughly 3,800 US dollars. Samsung Electronics is expected to file a countersuit against Huawei Technologies after the Chinese company sued Samsung over mobile patents. According to industry watchers in Korea, the Korean tech giant will take counteraction in the US court as early as July. It usually takes at least two months to review a complaint in patent infringement battles. 
This all comes after earlier this week, Huawei filed two suits against Samsung with a U.S. federal court in California and also in the Chinese city of Shenzhen, seeking financial compensation for an alleged unlicensed use of 4G technology. Industry watchers say the Samsung Huawei suit is likely to proceed pretty slowly and take a different course compared to an earlier and very well publicized battle between Samsung and Apple. Hyundai Motor was the best-selling brand in Australia in April on the back of strong sales of its compact cars. According to the Federation Chamber of Automotive Industries in Australia, Korea's largest automaker sold over 6,300 vehicles there last month, surpassing Toyota's sales of just over 6,000. And this is the first time, in fact, that Hyundai has taken the top spot in Australia since entering the market some three decades ago. The best-selling models were compact cars, including the i30 and the Accent. The automaker sold over 4,100 i30s and 1,500 Accents in April, up over 80% and 178% from the year before. Well, that's all we have for now on this Friday lunchtime here in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom. Thank you, as always, for watching. We'll be back throughout the day with more newscasts. But if we don't see you, have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye.